cosmos. And then you go on and do what you do. I go home, and you go home, and then we're, we're done. So I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going door to door. Not, I'm not twisting your arm. I didn't make you come here tonight. And so I don't want to take credit for this. There's, a, there's an underfed uh, hunger within us all, I'm judging, that is served by this kind of display of the universe. And it's your hunger that is making this happen. I can't create that within you. You have it. Okay. So, now, uh, and I'm going to end on my answer to this Mars One. Mars One, if you haven't heard, is a plan to send humans to Mars, I think by 2023? 24, thank you. In 10 years. Uh, nine years. Is that right? Thank you. Character two, yeah, that's right. So, uh, and it's by a Dutch entrepreneur named Baz Landstrop, who wants to send a colony from Earth to Mars and not bring them back. And people are lined up around the block to do this. A one-way trip to Mars, inspired by the great voyages of the 16th century where, in the 17th century, where, where ships would leave Europe on one-way trips, like the Mayflower. Those pilgrims had no intention of going back to England. <laughs> they, you know I love you, did uh, Had no intention of going back to, they landed at Plymouth Rock, they pitched tent, and they started life with all the dangers associated with it. This is the idea on the premise that if you do that, the need and urge to homestead and transform Mars will become that much more of an imperative. And our exploratory urges would be manifest within this expedition. Now, I, I'm speaking about this because you asked me. Not because I, because I don't like standing in the way of dreamers. It's, these people, they're thinking beyond where the rest of us are. Let him do so, okay? But since you asked, <laughs> the pilgrims who came to the United States, here they are on the boat, okay? And then they land, here's Plymouth Rock. All right, they get off the boat. They can breathe the air. <laughs> <laughs> the trees in the New World are made of wood, just like the trees in Europe. So they could repair their ship. Fruit grows on the, on the bushes. They could eat the fruit. People were already there to greet them. <laughs> so to analogize a pioneering trip to Mars <coughs> to these colonies, I think is false, or is, is, is misrepresents the symmetry of that problem. And so, Mars, by the way, is cold and dry. Antarctica is not as cold, and it is much drier than Mars. Not as cold, sorry, not as cold and not as dry as Mars. Yet, I don't see people lining up to live in Antarctica, okay? So, what are you gonna have to do? You're gonna have to build these hab modules where it's 72 degrees and you have little farms inside. You're gonna be creating Earth on Mars. You're not actually gonna be living on Mars. You're gonna be living in the mini Earth module on the surface of Mars. So, I'm skeptical that this is the right idea as a next step in space. Plus, I'm skeptical that it can happen in 10 years. Apart from that, <laughs> um, what I really want to do is get Baz Lundstrup on my radio show on Star Talk. Because I don't like saying things about somebody's plans unless I can get them to just say it to my face. And then I would maybe there's some insight that I'm missing that he's going to accomplish. By the way, this is going to cost money. He has sponsors. They might you might do a reality show based on it, or you know, 
because we need more reality shows. Um, and so I, I, I wish him well. And I have strong skepticism, but I will not stand in his way. By the way, the Dutch were the next people to sail the oceans after countries did it first. The first Europeans in the New World, their voyages were paid by countries, specifically by Spain. Columbus has Italian heritage. Italy was busy building churches and creating art. They were not explorers as a nation. It was not in the culture, but some Italians wanted to explore. They needed to go to a culture that wanted to explore along with them, and that was Spain. Spain paid for all those great voyages of the past. And you know what they did? They said, while you go, don't come back and tell us about the people you meet and the place. Here's a satchel of Spanish flags. Plant them wherever you go. That was sort of the hegemonistic backstory to those voyages. And that's why so many people in the world speak Spanish today. And hardly anybody speaks Italian. They speak Italian in Italy, and as, as an official, and the Vatican, and Torchino. And I'm told, like, it's a second language to some people in Argentina, because there were Italians that moved there. That's it. So there's a difference in culture. Okay? People don't go to Spain to see the magnificent Renaissance art the way they do in Italy. It was a different culture. Okay? That's the cost. You either have your art or you have your you run the world. Like which is it? Okay? <laughs> so so I I want to be on Mars just like the next person. I don't know if that's the most likely plan. And if I ever have the opportunity to go to Mars, I want to check to make sure there's enough budget to bring me back. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Washington. Thank you.